Hi, everyone. Today, I want to put out a short video regarding some emails that went back and forth between myself and also another searcher to Jack. And I just want to give you the information that was put out. The first one I want to discuss, I want to thank Redneck Girl. She posted a message on Thor and she had four questions, but I'm only going to focus on two of them here. If you want to see uh, the other two questions, uh, you can go to Thor and check out her post. All right, so here's her question. First one is, is it possible that where warm water salt and put in below the home of brown refer to the same or are close to the same location? Jack's response, no, because they are separated by a distance that is too far to walk. The put in is not the same exact location as warm water salt. There is some kind of separation between them. The second question, in your opinion, could too far mean 24? Now, you know what she's getting at here. A lot of people say not far, but too far to walk, not four, but two, four, two, not four, but 24, and so on. His response is no, it is not an integer. It is a relative distance. So what does that mean? Something interesting came up uh, that I want to mention as an aside here before I go on. After the chase was over, my partner in Wyoming um, had me do some work for him. And he's a, a miner, a gold, gold miner, and so on and so forth. And he wanted me to do some uh, geographic uh, satellite stuff for him, studies of the ground, basically, to help him identify a couple of things. So anyway, he had me doing some of that research. And I used a program called QGIS. And GIS, by the way, stands for Geographic Information System. QGIS is a free application that you can find online and people that use this are scientists and people that are developing communities and doing studies based on you know pollution or water or you know maybe mineral deposits um maybe map making all of that stuff is all wrapped in the QGIS. and i basically learned a lot about QGIS. so it was interesting that I've, i put, had documentation here on the QGIS app and a couple of things they mentioned in here is spatial thinking, and I want to go over what they say. Space can be measured in absolute relative and cognitive terms. So distance is also described in absolute relative and cognitive terms. And an interesting side note is relative distance is frequently used in astronomy and geography. Basically, they use it in, in, when it makes more sense than specifying things absolutely uh, as absolute locations. So to give you an example of a direction, an absolute direction would be north, south, east, west, right? But a relative direction would be based on your current position and direction. In other words, if you're currently facing a specific direction and it says left, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be facing west. It all depends on where you were facing before. If you were facing west and you go left, you're facing south. But relative is left, right, up, down, forward, backward, above, below. You know, it's specifying something relative to another place. It's not an absolute. Now, when you're discussing distance, absolute distance is measured with standards of measurement, such as GPS coordinates, miles, yards, feet, etc. For example, all the information on a topographical map is stored and displayed as a representation of absolute locations in space using precise measurements and calculations. Relative, on the other hand, is a calculated measuring distance using metrics such as time, effort, cost, for example. For instance, the absolute distance of two cities might be 2,000 miles apart, but when expressed relative, it could become the distance of the two cities as measured in how many tanks of gas or mileage charges along a highway, for example. Another example I like to use is maybe a subway map. If you get onto a subway at location X and somebody says, take the second stop, that could be, you know, two miles. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. He's telling you to take the second stop. Or it, you could be getting on a highway at a specific entrance, and then he goes, go two exits. Okay, that's relative. He doesn't need to specify mileage. Doesn't need to specify any, you know, anything other than go to, to, you know, two exits from where you are. Okay. 
And I wanted to bring this up, too. There's something known as cognitive perception of distance. And again, this is very interesting that this is specified in documentation for a geographic uh, application. But cognitive refers to an individual's perception of how far things are apart. For instance, to some, driving 200 miles between Houston and San Antonio, Texas, is a reasonable drive. However, for others, a 200-mile drive may seem very, very far distance to travel if they're not used to traveling that distance regularly. And I believe Forrest took advantage of that in the poem. You know, because not far, but too far to walk. How far we can walk is very subjective. But another thing I want to point out is relative or cognitive perceptions of distance can change over time. For example, if you talk to somebody in the 1800s about going from New York to California, that trip could take months. When today you could do it in hours, just hop on a plane. <clears throat> Another way to measure relative distance or relative differences, I should say, between two places is they could base it on social, cultural, or economic, economic relatedness or connectivity, you know. So it's not talking about a physical place. For example, if you took, um, I don't know, Australia, okay, the, the, the populated areas of it, and then you were comparing it to somewhere in the outback or, or in some, um, you know, rainforest where tribes have never seen an airplane or a human, you know, another hum, human being, you're not talking about the distance, you're, you're talking about perceptions of two different places, relatively speaking. So anyway, that's what the difference is between relative and absolute. So how does this question impact the poem? Well, first of all, it rules out GPS, in my opinion. And second of all, as I said, it rules out people that are saying, well, you know, not far but too far to walk is 10 miles, because that's what he said in the Too Far to Walk book. According to Jack, that's wrong, because that is an absolute measurement. And Forrest is not talking about absolute measurements. So what could, what could that be visually? I like to do things visually. So here we have a visual, okay? Now let's say the O is where you're currently at and the X is where you want to be, okay? And he's telling you the distance from here to here is not far but too far to walk. It's unknown in the poem. It's an absolute distance, but he doesn't give us a measurement. This, he's just telling you it's close. Okay, it's not far, so it's close, but it's too far to walk. Now that could mean that this is a cliff this is a cliff, and the distance might only be, you know, a thousand feet, which is not far. You could certainly walk that distance, but you can't hear because you would fall to your death. You'd have to instead follow a road all the way around the long way, okay? Because the absolute distance is close, but the actual distance you got to travel is far. Another thing this could be is a river. You could be standing right across a river, but maybe there's no way to get across it. You have to go all the way around to come up on the other side. So you have to use some other means to travel. Or maybe you need to use a boat, right? So that's what he's talking about relative. So that's a, a good way to visualize this. Another thing to think about, since I was talking about subways, imagine that you're on a road. I don't know. Let's say, um, you know, some kind of a turnpike, or maybe you're on the Grand Loop Road, and you hopped on the road in, let's say, Madison, I mean, Mammoth Hot Springs, and you're following it counterclockwise, okay? So you're on that road, and he tells you to go to the second stop. So now you're going to drive. This is the first stop where you are, but now you're going to go to the second stop. Now, the distance that you traveled, he doesn't mention here, okay? He's just saying that you can't walk that distance for some reason. But but relative is referring from here to here. He could be saying, go to the next stop. In other words, it's not far. It's not at the current position where you currently are. It's at the next one, you know? And I like to use that example in one of my, uh, my solve. 
uh, where I have try the wheel. When you're choosing a letter out of a sentence that has more than one of the same letter that you that you need, okay, like for example, not far, but too far to walk has three A's. So he's telling you that it's near, so it's not far, but it's also not the furthest one. It's just too far to walk, it would imply the second one, which will be happen to use. That's how I was reading that. So that's not in the poem. You're walking from word to word, but in this case, we're talking about a distance. So it's the second stop. So that's what I think that means. Now, let me move on to another uh, series of questions that I um, sent to Jack, and he answered. And I sent these to K-Pro. I don't know if she put them in the database or not, but I'm going to give them to you because I think that they are definitely helpful. And also, regarding um, Redneck Girl's post, there are some people in that post that are saying that there's no way to determine if a solution is correct now that the treasure chest is gone. And then also I've read other places where people are saying that Jack is going to sell the solution with the chest. So I want to address both of these as being incorrect. And I'll show you what I mean in, the, in my latest email. So here we go. In February 18th of this year, I sent Jack a letter. Okay. And I'm going to bounce back and forth between his answers and my questions just so that everything is in context. Question number one, I asked him, do you have any intentions of continuing the old chase or starting a new one? His answer, no. But I will like to pay it forward in some way. So he's not going to start another treasure hunt. He's not going to continue to chase. Um, so for those of you who think that the treasure is still out there, if it is, it's not going to be Jack that continues it. But he's going to pay it forward in some way. Okay. So that's kind of cool. Now, my second question, if someone has the desire to still attempt to solve the Forest Wren poem, is there any way they can confirm their solution since the treasure is now gone? Forrest has always said there is no way to know if your clues are correct without finding the chest. Since you found it and it's no longer there, does this mean it's now impossible to determine if we have solved it going forward? His response to that is, yes, I knew it was the right location before I found it because of the evidence. Now, I don't know what he means by the evidence. Is he talking about the evidence in the poem? For example, something similar to try the wheel? Or is he talking about evidence that he found on the ground? We just don't know. And he refuses to get very specific because he claims that that's too much info and it's giving out the the uh, solution, which he says he has no intentions of doing. Number three, he didn't answer, because if you read number three, I only really told him to answer if it was based on his answer to number two. Now, the fourth one, have you decided when the treasure will be going for auction? His answer, no, that's a little out of my hands right now, but hopefully soon. But I don't know what to say about that. I mean, Forrest always indicated that he's out of the picture. When the chest is found now, it's totally up to the searcher, to the finder, I mean, of what, what they want to do. So how can it be out of his hands? I don't know. My speculation is that it has something to do with the lawsuits. Hopefully, once these frivolous lawsuits are gone, and hopefully the people who initiated the lawsuits end up paying a lot of money to lawyer fees, for the fact that they're wasting time. But anyway, hopefully maybe that's the reason why. I don't know. I don't I don't understand. Another reason why, and this could be based on a proxy, like I was talking about in my older videos. Maybe there was a proxy. Maybe there was a legal barrier. Maybe there was something that needed to be done before you could do anything with the treasure chest. Because remember. In the poem, Forrest says he gives you title. He doesn't say he gives you the chest. What does that mean? Only Jack knows at this point. Now the fifth one. Again, will the solution come with the chest when the chest is sold? Answer, no. So there we go, folks. He has said in the past that he is not going to give out the solution. And people have speculated, well, 
he's going to sell the solution with the chest. And he answered it here, no, he is not going to do that. So pretty much, as far as he's saying, we're never going to know the solution. But it's interesting that he's saying here that it is possible to have overwhelming evidence somehow prove our solution without the chest being at the end. So anyway, I sent him, I sent him a reply back. I said, thanks, Jack. Just to make sure I understand your answer to number two, you are saying it is possible that we can confirm our solves even though the chest is no longer, no longer there. Correct? Jack responds back, yes. That's how it was for me. There is too much evidence for it to be reasonably wrong. So anyway, that's that's pretty much it, folks. Um, right here, you know, he's saying that um, there is a way to confirm that you have the correct solution. And he is not going to be giving out the solution, unfortunately. Um, he is not going to continue to chase, but he is going to pay it forward somehow. And as to why it's out of his hands, I don't know. And then the other thing, as I said, regarding Redneck Girl, thanks again. We know that um, Too Far and Too Far to Walk is not Too Far, Too Far Too. It's not an integer, it's a relative distance. Um, that's pretty much it, folks. One th comment that I want to make about what's been going on recently that kind of burns me up. I don't understand why people are kind of bragging that they received help from Forrest or hints from Forrest in emails a long time ago. Um, and I don't understand that for a couple of reasons. One, I think that by doing that, you're only perpetuating these conspiracies that the whole thing was a fraud. Because, I mean, if somebody trusted Forrest to believe that the treasure was there, certainly hearing that he was giving other people hints is not going to help us maintain confidence that Forrest was on the up and up. Second of all, I wouldn't be too happy about those hints because Forrest was not a stupid man. Um, he knew when people were trying to pry hints out of him, and he would basically feed you a bunch of BS. He's not going to give you any kind of hint. He's going to send you on a wild goose chase. You know, and third, people have said to me, um, well, you know, who cares? Even if they did get hints, you don't see any of those people with the chest, do you? And I got two comments about that. One, why would you say something as stupid as that? Do you really agree that Forrest should be giving hints to anybody else? And number two, how do you know they don't have the chest? And I'm just going to come out with something over the wall. How do you know that one of those people didn't hire Jack? And, and in the end, they're going to end up with money from this. How do you know that? How do you know that that's not true? They don't have it because, yeah, clearly, if one of them would have had it on June 6th, the whole search community would have blown up knowing that it was a fraud. So that's why I don't understand. Now, I'm not accusing any of those people of being involved in a hoax, but I really don't understand why they would put themselves out there like that. You're opening yourselves up. For somebody to sue you. Why? Well, because what you're saying essentially that Forrest Fenn was giving you hints. So how do how do they know that you somehow aren't involved with Jack? Are you involved with this? You know, and furthermore, I don't think it's anything to brag about because it makes you look kind of silly that even with hints, you were still unable to find the treasure. And it's even more funny because a lot of those people were not even looking in Wyoming. They were looking in four states away at wrong spot. All of a sudden, they came to the right spot about a year or two ago. And somehow, they imagined themselves as being the number one searcher. And they did basically just jumped in front of everybody that was already searching in Wyoming. And I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about like people that go way back, you know, Sam Smith. Uh, Chris Yates, Andrew Briggs, you know, oh, there's a lot of people that are that were searching in Wyoming, and that's all they were searching. And I hate to say it, but they know a lot more about the likeliness 
of where the chess may be than any of these people touting that they got hints from Forrest. I really, you know, I really don't understand that. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. And for those of you who don't believe that the treasure is in Wyoming, <laughs> I feel sorry for you. I just suggest you move on with life. Um, clearly, it was not in New Mexico. And you're only looking like a fool because if you trusted Forrest Fenn enough to even search for his treasure, then why don't you trust the fact that he said that it was in Wyoming? And why are you twisting his words? Well, he didn't mean Wyoming, the state. Oh, you know, like hell he didn't. Um, if you don't believe that it was in Wyoming, I I don't know what to tell you, but you're wrong. You know, your, your sob is wrong. And that's the laughable thing about these lawsuits. None of those people suing have any friggin' idea. In fact, I never even heard about those people that are suing in the Chase community ever until maybe the past year or so or two years when they've been starting all these frivolous lawsuits. You know, luckily the judges are starting to push back on these clowns and making them pay legal fees. And I hope that continues, um, you know, because I believe that that's become a hindrance to us being able to wrap up and find out the what's going on in the chase. Because I do agree that there's something shady with the ending. I just don't see Forrest sort of ended it that way. Unfortunately, I don't think anything is going to come out until these clowns move along and realize that their lawsuits are just a joke. And they're a joke. You know, stop chasing ambulances. Get a life. Move on. You know, so anyway, everyone, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. And I hope that somehow you're able to use this information. Uh, please uh, subscribe and hit that like button. And let me know below what you think. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Peace.